In a recent video where I tested this Hyphonics Pluto amplifier, I mentioned this Alpine 3522 as well. This is a small amplifier back from the late 80s into the early 90s. The 3522 with a Duo B circuit. If we take a look at the 1990 Alpine brochure, shows the Lamborghini Diablo here. Also the 7909 head unit. Some of the real fancy items that Alpine had back in the day. Their amplifiers, of course, including the 3545, which was their big dog amplifier, one that I've shown before in a video where I showed a amp dyno drag race between this amp and the Precision Power 2350DM. Check the link in the video description if you want to see that video or rewatch it. Here in the 1990 brochure, they do show off the 3522, maximum power 150 watts, power output at four ohms, 30 watts by two or 80 watts by one bridged. Let's take a look at the May 1989 audio magazine where we can actually see the 3522 listed with no list price. I'm not sure what's up with that. So then we uh, looked at the 1990 issue of the audio magazine Car Stereo directory and we see the 3522 150 dollars is the list price in 1990 that's equivalent to about 356 in 2024 to confirm that we get out the 1990 directory from car audio and electronics which is the april 1990 issue we can see the 3522 150 bucks but you do notice it says gold plated connections we'll get back to that here shortly here is the Alpine 3522 on this one side of the amplifier. You can see the power LED, which is red. Then we can see the text. It says Alpine 3522 bridgeable power amplifier duo B circuit. What is a duo B circuit? This stabilizes the amplifier, removes DC offset, and offers excellent total harmonic distortion characteristics. All that kind of good stuff. We will do a sound test later in the video, but uh, unfortunately you can't tell over the video how well it sounds, but this amp actually sounds really good. Also, you can see here the stereo mono switch, right and left RCA inputs, and the gain control goes from 0.1 up to 2 volts. Then we have the speaker plug here. This is via a Molex plug, which we have a harness I'll show you here shortly. Then we have a 15 amp fuse and the battery ground and remote terminal, again via a Molex plug, which we have a pigtail harness, all that fun stuff we will show you here. First off with the speaker connector, it's just four pins, plug it in. And again, we use these terminal strips here so that we don't have to strip the wires anymore. We'll leave links in the video description to those if you're interested. And here's the one for the power, the ground, and the remote turn on. These are hateful. <laughs> so the 3522 I'm showing off was available for a short period of time, 1989 to 1990. And then the 3522S came out which has the terminal strips built in. This is what the car audio and electronics directory was talking about with the gold plated terminals. Now, as far as dimensions go, 8.7 inches by 5.1 by two inches, pretty small for an amplifier at the time. Ratings according to the service manual, 25 by two at four ohms, 35 by two at two ohms or 65 watts bridged. Again, that's not exactly what it said in the brochure, but we got the specs here out of the service manual for this amplifier. Next up, we're gonna power up the amplifier and give it a little sound quality test with the ELAC bookshelf speakers. Let's go. Now I listened to this amplifier right after I listened to the Hyphonics Pluto. And I've got to say, and to my ears, this Alpine 3522 was far superior in sound quality over the Hyphonics. Next up, let's try the stereo test on the amp dyno for this Alpine 3522. 
We're gonna have the white, white, black, gray, and gray, black wires hooked up. Both channels hooked up to the dyno. First off, we're gonna try four ohms. Rated 25 by two in the service manual, rated 30 by two in the brochure. So let's see what it does. Certified, we're a little bit under 14.4, but we got right at 30 watts, about 29 watts average, right at 14 volts. So surely it does 30, uh, 30 watts by two at 14.4. Uncertified up to clipping, not a whole lot of difference here, right around 30 watts per channel at 14 volts. Dynamically, one kilohertz burst track, just get a watt or two more, 32 watts average at 14.09 volts. Now let's try the two ohm load. It's rated 35 by two in the service manual, 40 by two according to Alpine's ratings. In the brochure, you can see we got 40 on one channel and 33 on another. Uh, uncertified up to clipping. Let's see if we can get that 40 by two on both channels. And we're close, 38 and a half watts average at 14 volts. Again, we're a little shy of 14.4 because I didn't realize it was rated at 14.4. I thought it was rated like 13.5 or something. Anyway, dynamically, one kilohertz burst track, we average about 45 watts per channel at 14 volts. Now let's bridge the amp mono. You don't need anything special here to bridge it. Just use the uh, left positive or the white wire and the right negative as the negative, the gray and black wire. Four ohms mono rated 65 watts in the service manual, 80 watts according to the brochure. Let's see what we get here using the one kilohertz track. We get 84 watts, Oop, it jumped to 90 right there at the end at 14 volts. So it'd be this rating, don't matter which one you're looking at. Uncertified up to clipping. Let's see if we can get triple digits here. Can we? It's trying. 93. 14.05, <laughs> it's funny to watch these amplifiers that don't even do triple digits on the dyno. But again, this is from way back in 1989. So uh, yeah, we didn't have much power in head units back then. Uh, 108 at 14.1, good power for your six by nines. Here are all the results, including the eight ohm stereo test, which I did not show you. Efficiencies range from the low 40s up to the low 60s. Also bridged, you can see here, efficiency is in the mid 40s to high 50s. And of course it beat its rated power and all the different tests, so very nice. Next up, let's take out the bottom plate of the amplifier, take a closer look at the guts. There's six uh, screws, they're all Phillips head. Let's take the bottom plate off. You can see here, we got some wires jumped across the inside. Reminds me of the flagship 3545. That amplifier's got a lot of internal wiring as well. That's just standard for the time. Let's take a look at these capacitors here. Something really odd, there's a 50 volt 680 microfarad and a 25 volt 2200 microfarad cap. Those should be the same. And 35 volt 1500 microfarad, there's four of those on the rails. We have RFZ42s here for the power supply and for the outputs, the tip 3055s and the tip 2955s. These are BJTs or Big John's trousers. And here is the rest of the uh, flyover of the internals of this amplifier. And yes, we've already shown the Pluto amplifier before. What about this Autotech 44 watt monster amp? You guys wanna see it? Leave me a comment below if you wanna see how this amp performs. Now, before you click off and go to a different video, make sure you stick around because I do have an extra demo coming up right after this. Now we're gonna sneak in one more test. This is two ohms bridge mono dynamically, one kilohertz. This amplifier doesn't do a whole lot more power, but you can see here 104, 14 volts. And that's all for this video. I have some other videos listed here if you wanna check those out. Also check links in the video description to other videos. You can support me on patreon.com slash old school stereo for early access to my videos. Thanks as always, Big D, I'm out of here.